Now up against Tor because Tor, the way that he plays, super aggressive in the possession. Um, he squeezes very quickly. Good pressure. We're playing on patch three, so constant pressure is something that is very, very viable in the way that you play. He's playing in a 4 2 3 1 as well, matching up Nicholas. However, he's playing in a 4 2 3 1, the second variation. So he's got his left mid and right mid instead of Nicholas's 4 2 3 1 with the left cam and right cam. So, Nicholas, first time here on stream in 2019. Well, in FIFA 19, yeah. uh, in this season going to be an interesting one to watch of course playing in the white of FC Basel from left to right and Tor playing for SPQR not to be uh, I believe confused with the uh, a lot of you guys who've been following esports for a while the old Polish SPQR from back in the day and uh, it looks like Nicholas is going to be right off the bat winning himself a little corner yeah the way that Nicholas plays he almost it's a bit like a ball constrictor. He just strangles his opponent and um, usually wins sort of score lines. Doesn't concede a lot of goals, but he'll, he'll score maybe four or five goals and win 5 0, 5 1, 4 1, those sort of score lines. But when he really wants to turn it on, I think he beat, I'm sure he'll not mind me saying this, last year I believe he beat uh, Tom Lees from Footways Tom. I think it was 11 or uh, 9 rings a bell actually. Goal. Uh, deficit in that game for Tom so when he really wants to turn it on he can just look at the way he defends he will never ever press circle rarely he rarely presses lunge into tackles you saw it right then another player might have lunged in gave away a penalty Nicholas he just stands off stands off stands off with the jockey with the second man press and just nicks the ball back little blocks little interceptions here and there well defending that one as you mentioned perfectly uh, the first chance, uh, first uh, at least possession in the enemy box as a shot comes off and look at that goalkeeper positioning. Um, you know, even towards the middle there, it probably possibly could have gone in, right? He was stood right he on was the post. right on his post. So we can see already that Tor, definitely a man who uh, is moving that keeper well. Let's see how that all works out for him going forward. Trying a big weighted pass there through, but... That was cut out. A little bit sloppy in terms of passing so far has uh, been taught. And now it is Nicholas again pushing on through, but R9 not going to be quick enough there. Yeah, Nicholas last year got the reputation of, of being one of the best. And I think with that reputation came a lot of pressure that he put on himself. But also, people just didn't want to play against him. They yeah. did not want to see that bracket that they were coming up against the Argentine Nicholas. Because well, I've said earlier... You get that reputation about you. You go into the game thinking, I'm, I can't win this. I'm playing against Nicholas. I can't possibly win this matchup. Yeah, the feeling already of uh, being 1 0 down without actually a kick of the ball is definitely uh, a positive for those players that carry that kind of uh, reputation amongst them. It's, uh, although, as we've seen, you know, we said that yesterday about Gorilla and uh, Abinio threw that one completely out of the window as he did against Enrazak today in our uh, previous game that we showed here up until the uh, the end of that match where, of course, Abinio managed to push on through into the next round. There's a nice little ball. Again, great passing. Is he going to get the turn off here for Henri? Trying it, but again, just uh, the defender basically stood behind him this entire time and saying, I'm not going to make any kind of challenge here. You're going to have to decide on your uh, direction. I'm going to follow you through. He's in. R9, oh, one on one with the goalkeeper, just turned away from the goalie. And it gave Tor that time to reposition his goalkeeper and move him across for the finesse shot. I'd be interested to see, does that is that a feature that continues throughout this game? Is that a story of the game that Tor with his goalkeeper extremely, extremely useful with him, with that manual positioning? Or will Nicholas catch him out? So at the minute, it's been all Nicholas in this opening stage of this first leg. You'd imagine a player of his calibre would read that after a couple of shots and say, OK, I need to change the direction I'm shooting. The question then is whether you know, Tora is going to call his bluff and do exactly the, uh, the opposite of what he's been doing previously to that. That could be a bit of a chance for a break here for Tor. That ball, though, right over the top will uh, either run to the last defender or maybe even to the keeper. It's uh, easily defended there by Nicholas. No early goals in this one. 30 minutes gone, nil-nil. Yeah, you see the, the passing accuracy. Ronaldo from Nicholas, 100% thus far in this game. 
rolling with that traditional 4-2-3-1 fullbacks. Look, look how wide they are, Kyle Walker. On the other side, I believe it is Alexandro. Just giving him the width. And then you can see his two cams almost playing as right wing and left wingers. Real high up the pitch, pulling out the fullbacks, giving him that space to be able to work with. Now Johan Cruyff on the ball. Great right, little ball through R9. Danger spot as we already have seen so many times in this tournament. But Tork keeping that pressure high. There's the turn. Is he going to get the shot off? No, he's not. It was Hollett that got in between it. And again, well defended by Tor. That's cannon out. Uh, that's a goal kick. <laughs> Didn't quite know where it was so high up there. And it is a goal kick for Tor. So a very slow. Could be in him behind Pele. Start. That is a good ball over the top. Where are his options though? He's going to have to delay for a second. And it was again brilliantly defended this time by Walker. Yeah, Kyle Walker. We've got one in studio. We've got one on the virtual pitch. Which one's the real one? Well, depends who you ask. I think you have to uh, take it to uh, an audience poll for that one. So the possession there in the top left corner, 62% from the Argentinian. No real surprise there with that stat. Keeps the ball so well, does Nicholas. And I think if you're playing against a possession player, the way you play against them, you keep possession yourself. You take them out of the comfort zone. Well, doing a decent job of that here. We can see, you know, not a whole lot of options going forward. It's because of how dense that back line is for Nicholas. Now into Pele. Can he open something up with this one? I think both of them are going to be happy to go in at half time. Can he nick a goal from this first half? No, he can't. We're on there at the back and now a last time a last time that he's going to have a chance here Nicholas and not even going to get that the referee says that is the half time point and we go into the half in his first leg all square at nil nil I don't remember really seeing that all too often I think that Dr. Ahano spiel that we, uh, game that we had yesterday was literally the only one yeah we rarely get a nil nil at this level of FIFA you, you tend to see probably a mistake usually is the one goal and then one person has to change the custom tactics, one person has to adjust to that. That's when you see start to see the goals really start to fly in. But Nicholas, I think he'll be quite comfortable here. He's got the possession. He knows what he wants to do with the with the ball. A couple of occasions he had good chances to score, but Tor's been good with the goalkeeper. If he's not moving the goalkeeper, they're goals. It's as simple as that. If he's yeah. not moved him to that post, that's pretty much 2-0, two, 3-0 two nil, nil up for Nicholas at this stage. Tor. Just got to get a little bit more of the ball in that final third of Nicholas. You're almost you're trying to make a game plan on how to play against Nicholas. You look at Tex, what he did in Barcelona against him on that cross console final, but you can't really mimic that sort of performance because mm. I think that were all the stars aligned for Tex in yep. Barcelona. It was just a magical display from him. The skill moves, everything were working for him. He was shooting from range, they were going in. Looking at some of the other performances, Marcuso, what he did against him. Again, quite similar. Everything that he hit seemed to turn into gold, but he kept possession for large spells against um, Nicholas. But I seem to remember as well, towards the end of the game, when Nicholas really, really started turning it on, I think he had like 30, 40% possession, Marcuso, but he had something to hold on to. He had that goal. So if Tor can get one up, get 2-1 up, and hold on to something, pull Nicholas out, maybe that's his only way to go. There was a shot saved this time by Neuer. Five minutes in game, that little build up there. Now, let's see what Tor can do. All over the top there. Again, though, not quite accurate enough on the passing. And look how direct Nicholas is there. Sees, okay, I've got a chance. He's going to whip it into the middle. He won't. And stay there with CR7, which is going to cost him possession in the end. You saw how far the goalkeeper out then uh, when he were going to. Potentially cross it in. Goalkeeper pretty much 10 yards out from his goal line. I think that's awaiting. A, a decent read as well, right? You see, okay, he's up and here is he either cuts back or is he it? crosses it in. There is a chance for Henri. Oh, he's flicked it into the back post, but defender was already in front. Still got possession here with R9. 
again to the feet of Henri. Can't quite find that opportunity. Big sliding tackle there. Could be an error in the end. There is R9. Takes the shot. Oh, and he's gone over. Yeah, just overcomplicating things there. Was tall for me. I think you've got Henri on his right foot. Just just have a go at goal. If you get a maybe something off the goalkeeper, get a, a parry off the goalkeeper, it's an easy finish if you can get a deflection or something like that. But to dink it into the back post in that sort of area when you haven't really got anyone offering. Oh. <laughs> Hit the bar there. Can he get the rebound? He can't. Nicholas showing how to cross it in there. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, I think Tor was waiting from that last ball, right? Where he brought the keeper out that little bit. Was hoping that he could just get out and catch it straight away. He's giving possession away. It's sloppy, though, from Nicholas. And Tor now has a chance to slow things down a little bit for him. Start edging a little bit forward towards the edge of Nicholas's box again trying to just feed it through from R9 to CR7 but he cut out once again you saw how we were defending there as well Nicholas really aggressive in his tackles pulled Sergio Ramos forward he pulled Vieira across as well to try and just squeeze him down so he doesn't have even any room to turn you can see there he switches always onto the closest man pretty much and then uses the second man press and Hull is going to intercept that once again it's fascinating to watch Nicholas just in the way that he defends. Also, if you look at his face cam, even when he scores, zero expression from him. He's here to do a job. He is the postman, if you like. And you're on Algi earlier. Here is Henri. Space in the middle, but actually tried to thread it through there, which I'm not sure is his best option in all honesty. But I think this may be, you know, in terms of uh, a game plan, I'm sure it's not, but if you can go in nil-nil against Nicholas into that last leg, then you know, you know, one goal that we can maybe hold on to in that second leg, there's a real chance then. If you end up going a couple down from this first leg, you know how good Nicholas is. Your chances of scoring, I feel like this is, you know, Tor's probably got one or two goals in this one, realistically. So, has to make those count, the chances that he gets, and then has to hope that he can hold on to it. Was well, that nothing... Really clear cut, yeah, apart no. from the Henri little dink to the back post where he could have taken a shot. We've seen a couple of subs here coming on for both of these two sides, Neymar and Ronaldinho and Lothar Mateus, I believe, coming on for Nicholas, that is. On the other side of it, I think it was Eusebio coming on for the Manto. This is a chance for Nicholas. Right into the feet, great turn as well from Eusebio, well defended there, Cortland to pass it back, nice little interception as well. But there's just nowhere to go from there, you know, usually you'd say there's maybe a chance for a break here, but defence of Nicholas sitting back and difficult to break through what's been a bit of a brick wall. That back line here of Nicholas, finally some space for Eusebio, but again the options just become so limited so quickly. Yeah, 100%, and we're seeing Tor right now trying to just work something out of nothing. Vieira played into Henri, it just seems he's got no cutting edge right now, has Tor. He's got nothing to pierce the skin of Nicholas and to break that deadlock. Let's get himself a corner, though. Where does he go with this one? He's pulled Ronaldo onto sure. the penalty spot. No, in towards the penalty spot. He's bound again into the air. But Nicholas holds on. There's a lot of space on that top side. He was, had the man making the run already. He just couldn't shake off those defenders to make that ball. And what a tense first leg this has been. 83 minutes gone. No goals. Now a free kick. Quite a, a dangerous area if you do decide to just throw it into the box but he's going to play short keep hold of the possession is Nicholas Neymar again mm. losing it zero first time finesters so far from Nicholas which is quite interesting to point out I'm actually wondering has he actually got time finishing turned on um, the Argentine so we've not seen any of it so far from him Mateus down this left hand side going to look to put it into the box but no real conviction on the cross just putting it in for crossing's sake it feels like 
for a 10 start for this round of 16 game. Two South Americans. So far, no one been able to break that deadlock. Get himself on the score sheet. Really neat one here, right in the final moments of this first leg. The final pass just wasn't there. And I feel like that's been missing a little bit, that final clinical pass for both players. There is a chance, though. There's two men in the box, and, well, he finds the one that doesn't belong to him. Yeah, he was so open at the back post, and that is actually going to wrap up the game right there, Joe. Nil-nil after the first leg. This game is 100% still in the balance. I'll be interested to see their full-time stats. So we are going to switch over here. This is one that we were thinking we were going to see anyway. It is, of course, Tex versus Dylan Mike. And what timing? It's three apiece. And Tex has a penalty. 86 minute. Where's he going to go? Bottom left. Keeper doesn't even move. And it is Tex who takes the lead here over Dylan Mike. And a bit of a turn up for the books. This one, we, you know, call it the, the youngsters derby. And, uh, you know, Spencer alluded to the point. If Tex loses this one, he kind of loses his... Uh, his youthful crown, if you like, as uh, Dull and Mike coming in as the, the new youngster. But so far, the young Brit doing well. Yeah, Tex, 17 years of age, and Dull and Mike, a year younger at 16. Tex had that breakout tournament in Barcelona, where he did go on to win the event, and then shortly afterwards signed contract with F2 United, F2 FC. He's their eSports representative player. But Dull and Mike, zero fear. No, and takes that shot as well. That's something that the uh, the one game that we saw him yesterday was not afraid to be taking those first-time shots. And he rattled a few in as well. Not looking like uh, he'll be able to bring this one back level, but nonetheless, I think going in against a player like Tex at halftime, uh, sorry, after the first leg, just one goal down is definitely nothing to be ashamed of. You see the two postures once again. <laughs> Tex looking into the camera. I think he is he wondering is he on stream or not right now? <laughs> Don't need to do me air. Well, he's kept the hood up at least. So uh, maybe he doesn't care about the hair at this point. It finishes 4-3 in favour of Tex after that first leg. And you can see uh, Tex getting up. Clearly he's forgot something. Yeah. Because <laughs> he forgot that he needs to play second leg. Yeah. I think that uh, the guys are allowed a, a little bit of a break here between these legs. I'll get outside for a breath of fresh air. Dull and Mike. Yeah. What performance that is. 4-3 uh, loss against Tex. But if you're coming into this game, if you're, uh, you're not really seeing Mike play before, you're probably thinking that's a pretty easy tie for mm. Tex. But a lot, of, uh, a lot of whispers going about Dull and Mike at the minute. 16-year-old um, wonder kid coming through uh, the scenes of Germany. A lot of the German pros, experienced German pros, say he's one for the future, definitely. But maybe the future can become the present right now if he picks up a big win against Tex. That's almost the insanity of it, right? You're 16 and you're and you're at this level, right? Um, which means, you know, leave it four years and you're 20, which is definitely yeah. uh, not an old age to be. And how much experience you can gather in that amount of time means that. You know, Tex himself, uh, Dylan Mike here, and all those younger players, so much chance to develop, so uh, so much room to grow. It's, in, it's actually quite insane. Yeah, 100%. I think we did just hear something in my ear. I think I heard Phil B uh, was a scoreline, uh, but didn't get to catch it fully. Um, so I'm sure the other game's taking place. 6-0 up against The Stranger. He's 6-0 up against The Stranger? Yeah. Which is... Um, wow. Yeah, it's certainly an interesting one. We weren't expecting that. Of course, Phil B went 3-2, as did The Stranger yesterday. Uh, we caught the final moments of the uh, the EMLS derby, uh, which Phil B won to actually come through um, into this round, into the playoffs today. But 6-0 against The Stranger is a an Actually, insane score from one leg. Just need a little bit of time to, uh, to take that in. 6-0 against The Stranger. The Stranger... A lot of people regard him as top three, top four PS4 players yeah. in the world. Um, and for Phil B to come in, just show him no respect whatsoever, and be six and up in the first leg, that's that has actually that shocked me a little bit. But 
you expect it from Philby. He's a former semi-finalist in uh, the 2017 Grand Finals. He's an experienced player. Number of events last year. Seems as though this year things have just clicked for him. Mm -hmm. um, Red Bull athlete as well. And I'll tell you what, 6-0 up against the stranger. If the stranger pulls something out of the blue and pulls a comeback off, I'll be... Shock. <laughs> I mean, that is a comeback, right? I'm even more if can, shocked. If you can, uh, if you can come back from six nil down, that is literally. Uh, I feel like we need to do something if he comes back. Okay. We'll think about and it. We're open for suggestions again. We'll think about it. Uh, make sure you get your tweets in at EA Sports FIFA. Uh, we'll see, see what comes in um, for that one as well. We are waiting for. Uh, the players to get themselves back in, as we said, they do have a little bit of a break between legs, which I think is, you know, sensible. very fair and uh, and sensible to have as well. Because obviously, if you're six nil down, uh, what you want to do is take a <laughs> just take a break completely for two minutes, get yourself in a corner, get some fresh air, and think, okay, what am I gonna do? Yeah, I think I've just heard as well that Stokes is actually two nil up against Lyrics as well. So in the all British affair, uh, Stokes, Tom Stokes. Blatant corn, you might know him, leading two goals to nil against Lyric. So another big performance there from Tom Stokes. I had him down as a dark horse. He could go all the way in this tournament. He's been qualifying very, very good online. He was one of the best players in the world, not only in England, but in the world mm -hmm. during 2011 to 2013, 14, that sort of era. The players like the Bullock, they're very familiar with him. Recently got the chance to, to talk to Bullock recently on a podcast, and he was saying that, you know what? Watch out for Tom Stokes because he's got the quality and the experience mm. that a lot of these players don't actually have that sort of experience in previous tournaments to bring into new tournaments. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. If he does get past the lyrics, he'll play the winner of this game that we're seeing right now on stream between Tex and Dullen Mike. Well, I can tell you that Dullen is a, a German word that means boring, um, which this game is certainly not. And Mike has certainly proved that he's not um, throughout this tournament. Um, he's 4-3 behind. We'll see, though, if he can change this one around 90 minutes in-game to bring this scoreline level and maybe in his favour. Uh, you know, that was quite a, a scary number that Jimmy pulled out, the fact that 33 years old, both of them combined, combined. Uh, which makes me, I'm, you know, not quite there either, but certainly... Uh, <laughs> Getting in that direction, that makes me feel a very, very old man. But just shows that, you know, this kind of platform that's been developed for FIFA, the, the online qualification and the chance to really, you know, get somewhere fast is uh, just an incredible chance for some of these youngsters to, to get involved, get themselves developed, have the chance. There is Handanovic. We mentioned Handanovic. I think Dylan Mike's basically the only player we've seen that's been playing him uh, in this tournament. But... He's been coming up big. There's a cross coming in from Tex. This one's going to be cleared. Yeah, Ronaldo does pick it up. I think the thing you said about going from having nobody, what's oh. a great finish from Tex. <laughs> up on his feet. He knows that that's a big goal to take him away from Dylan Mike to re-establish that two-goal advantage. But as you were saying about with the way that qualifiers work, Dylan Mike, he's gone from playing in his own bedroom to playing to 90,000 people online watching this on, on Twitch alone. So to be able to, to comprehend that is quite insane. That yeah. You've gone from playing to nobody, maybe your mum walks in now and again and sees you playing, to having all these people, and they're, they're going to be scrutinising your game, they're going to be praising you. It's a lot to take in at such a young age. I mean, let's be fair, how, how many games do they have to play to qualify for this tournament? Obviously, your first weekend getting 27-0, and then jumping into, the uh, into that Swiss style. Uh, that means that you've basically gone from playing Sunday League to playing in, uh, in Wembley Stadium yep. uh, in a matter of weeks, which obviously is just not possible in a real world scenario. But yeah, in FIFA, just shows that that is what dreams are made of. Have to say, though, that last goal was an error from Dullen Mike, the pass uh, from Ronaldo that went to Hull it. Then, uh, Expertly finished from Tex. It is now a two-goal lead for the slightly older of the younger players here. Is that a penalty? No, it's not. Yeah, he got quite fortunate there because he did go down in the box. Sometimes you see them give. Oh, very interested to see Dolomite's fullback there. Kyle Walker, completely out of position. He was flying forward, if it is Kyle Walker, in that right-back position. It could be Yao Cancelo, actually. You see Manolas coming across as well. Yeah. Manolas, Handanovic. 
all featuring for Dullan Mike. He's, he's familiar with these players and he wants to use them on the biggest stage. It is Kyle Walker, in fact. He was so far forward. He was almost playing a right wing position, similar to what he plays for Man City when he's bombing on that right hand side. So that could be something that Dullan Mike does like to utilise the full backs overlapping, getting wicked and getting crosses into the box. Managed to clear out any danger there, though. And now, let's see if he can play some Route 1 stuff into Holly. Oh, and I made the move, and he saw he was just trying to feed it on through. And again, well read by Tex, and he's going to play one, a big one, over the top. Keeper coming out, and, well, he does manage to collect. Just on the edge Always of an interesting one, there, right on the edge of the box, almost down by the touchline. How does that keeper react? And uh, this time, safe hands for uh, Dullan Mike. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if Handanovic does have a good game. One more pros decide to Ooh. put him in his team. That's a great effort. He, Texas actually is blown back by yeah. that. Keeper's not even realised it himself. The keeper's like, oh, it's going way over. Oh, wait a minute. There's the, uh, the sound of my bar being rattled. Wow. No follow-up for it, though, but such close stuff. And I think that's the kind of thing that Dunham Mike's going to need to get back into this game. A little bit of luck involved go a long long way but look at the amount of space here for our nine he's going to get the shot off and you cannot give him that kind of space in that position you cannot give him that sort of space and you cannot not move your goalkeeper across to cover the finesse shot he's, you've got to think it's coming in he's not moved him at all he's not moved him one centimetre so it gives someone of Texas quality someone of R9's quality almost an open invite to say go on finesse that if you get it in green you're guaranteed a goal yeah we saw the defender kind of Move in the wrong direction, which gave him all that space to get the shot off. Here's a chance, though, for Dullin Mike to have a shot of his own, but this time it is blocked. Now, though, again in there, first time shot, and he's got a little bit lucky there. Texas laughing his head off and wondering how the hell that just happened. Let's have another look at it. You see shot your... came over, and well, you see, we all read it. You've got to say he <laughs> read the finesse. He just glanced it. Absolutely, in. he's like, oh yeah, yeah, finesse. No, thank yeah, you. I'll take that. that one. But, you know, sometimes you have to have them. As I said, a little bit of luck could go a long way here for Dull and Mike to get back into it. Yeah, that could potentially derail Tex as well. You saw him laughing. Maybe he uh, doesn't keep his head in the game, maybe. Interesting to see from this point out. 6-4 the scoreline right now. Tex is leading. But Dull and Mike... Definitely in this game from that sort of freak goal from Eusebio. Oh, and a short strike off again. Noya down to his right this time, though. Ball swung in towards the penalty spot. Keeper brought out, but he keeps possession. Does Dullan Mike. To Hullick, he's got a bit of space now. Eusebio, who scored before. This time, Noya does get down. Tex gives Noya a clap there as well. It's taken short, though, for Dullan Mike. Surely will bring this one across. CR7 turns in, takes the shot. There's too many bodies in the way, though. R9 tries to flick it back over. Neuer already out and prepared. Yeah, this year with the flick system, it, it makes it very, very easy to be able to, to flick the ball back over your head, to flick it in any direction possible. Just using that right stick. If you can master that technique, you can score some fantastic goals. El Tornado into flicks. Rainbow flicks. And then using that right stick control to be able to flick it anywhere you want onto your play onto your favourite foot as well. A good new addition. See that possession there, 61% for Tex. Which tells me, you know, this second half has been a little bit more uh, this second leg, sorry. What am I talking about? This second half of the first half has been a little bit more balanced. And I think Tex has really been very dominant. In the first 30 or so minutes of the second half. That's a great little slide, but the pass is going to mean the keeper has to rush out. Scary moment maybe there for Dull and Mike. But now he finds himself one-on-one -on -one with the defender. He's going to have to beat him. And it is Rio who says, no nonsense. Clear is he out, and that is the end of this first half. Tex seems like a happy man at this point. Yeah, I think he's just wondering how... I think he's thinking back, how on earth did that UCBL goal go in? Um couple of drinks from him as well just keeping calm that's one thing you've got to do at this stage you see the, the very very best players over the course of 
of FIFA's history. They've always been quite calm characters. Look at someone like MS Dasari. Yeah. He rarely, rarely gives it big celebrations in the game, just a, a couple of the years, potentially. But that's always after it's finished. After he's finished the game. Quite a reserved character. You can play a lot in your favour as well. How do you just stay in that concentration zone, whether it's you know, being annoyed at something that's gone against you or being happy at something that you've managed to pull off. If you can block both of those uh, sides of emotions out, then you can stay much more complicated. That's uh, uh, concentrated. That's a great ball over the top and cross straight in. And uh, so far in the back of the net there. He's uh, nearly ended up in the stand. Neuer, though, was the first man to it. But a good little ball. Some good initiative, really, from Dylan Mike to try that. Yeah, safe hands from Manuel Neuer, Ingo, and Costal Manolos there. Great tackle coming out of defence, sliding in, taking the ball back for Dylan Mike. He's looking to start another attack. R9 could be in. Oh, he's taking the first time shot as well. You saw the he keeper. Had so much time. Yeah, Tex kept him on that bottom stick as well. And look at that. Look at the positioning there from the keeper. Even if that had hit the target, the keeper would have had it. Interesting enough as well, I think that's uh, the 94 R9 actually being used with the little R9 haircut that Dolan Mike is using. So he's not going for the 96, the 94. A couple of differences, he has medium low work rates instead of medium medium that the 96 does possess. And he's, quite, he's a little bit stockier as well, he's a little bit stronger in the physical battles. He lacks a little bit of pace, shooting quite similar between the two items, but the main difference, the work rates and the strength of 94 R9 over 96. Pause queued here by Dylan Mike. And 56 minutes gone, two goals to get. Now maybe time for a couple of changes here from his side of things. Tech so far doing a good job of keeping that two goal buffer intact. Good ball down the line to Eusebio. Can't get past Ferdinand though. See those direct passes out. Again, it's Ferdinand on the other side of the action. Who's going to stop this one? R9 bursts through, though. Can he get past the keeper? He's brought him out. It's all a bit of a mess there in the box, but crucially for Dullan Mike, he holds on. Yeah, went for a ball roll into a little slotted finish past the goalkeeper, but Handanovic come out, smothered it really well, and then just got bodies around the ball to make sure nothing was getting deflected or rebounded goalwards. This is a chance for Tex. There we have it. And call it in there as well. On his left. And Dullan Mike you know, defending that last one. That problem that he had with his keeper well. But straight away he gave the ball away. And Tex comes marching back on into the box. I don't know if you see that. Right cam. Nakajama. 81 rated in form. Coming on for Dullan Mike. Is he going to be the super sub? <laughs> no Mbappe needed. <laughs> Well, I mean, why not? We've uh, we've talked about you know things that you you feel yourself. Okay, this could be this could be my key. No one's gonna think. No one's gonna be using this, but I may just have a bit of a chance with it. That's we'll see how that all works for out uh, works out for Dylan Mike. He's seven four behind, so needs something. And of course, Nicholas though is not playing Dylan Mike, but he is playing, and he is of course wow. playing against Tor, who's winning two one here. In this second leg, change of kits. Uh, Nicholas here is the one that's breaking through with Cruyff. Oh, and it's like, I think he hit the bar or the post there. Yeah, it wasn't the keeper. But Tor is winning 2-1. to one. Don't forget that first leg was 0-0. Nil, nil. Ten stuff, but things seem to have opened up a little bit here in the second. Yeah, Nicholas, 2-1 down. We don't often see this man in losing positions. Let's see what he's got to try and bounce back into this game. Tor... I'll be interested to see the goals that he did score. Tor score. Is that that one? And even even better for you that Tor means goal in German. There we go. If you take the E off the end at least. Uh, but oh, that's kick. a foul, yeah. Taken uh, all the way back there to Holly. What does he do? Well, surely just roll this one off short. And go from there. Not a lot of options moving forward there. He does find Ronaldo. Actually lays that one off with a bit of a back heel to hull it. I think he had a bit more time to uh, figure out a better option there. But is Nicholas here now feeling the pressure? 30 minutes in game to go. Still one goal to score. A little chink over the top, but didn't quite reach its man. 
Look on that far side. If Nicholas does decide to use it, he's trying coming back inside and just getting a little bit congested in the middle of the park right now. Both of the players struggling to keep possession. Again, Nicholas losing out. But he has won himself a free kick in. Quite a, a decent position. Yeah, going to be rolled off once again. Where does he go from here? Ronaldo. Bit of space up top for Alexandro, but Walker got in there. At this point, you know, keep a hold of the ball for Tart. Let those minutes tick in your favour. But again, he's lost it. And that's something that I think we saw a lot of in the first leg. And so far from what we've seen in the second leg, he's had problems keeping a hold of the ball for any extended period of time. Eusebio coming in. Neuer with an outstretched leg. will stop any danger from that one. But now... Let's see what Tor can do. As I said, a bit of possession would do him a world of good at this point. Yeah, just to slow the game down a little bit as well. Almost take the sting out of the game. Win himself a free kick and a good opportunity. Perfect for Tor right now. And a substitution coming out from the Brazilian. Pelé coming off. Ronaldinho coming on in at Cam. And Neymar coming on as well. Or is it going to be Cruyff? I don't think he's fully decided just yet. Eusebio coming on. Eusebio, yeah. At left mid. Oh, here we go then. Changes in. What can Tor do from here? Taken short as expected. Nice little ball down the line to Henri. Finding a hole in the defence. As good as Nicholas is, is surely going to be difficult. That's a nice little ball back. It is Vieira though, so not going to hit this one. And again, losing out on possession. There is possession. It's... <laughs> About as even as it could be. Yeah, but it's quite interesting to see the game, part of the game that we did watch, Nicholas were dominating yeah. in possession. So it looks like Tor, maybe a little bit of a game plan to try and keep the ball better in this second leg. Certainly, 51% to 49 leads. And that's a chance he swiveled and just got a nick on it, did Rio Ferdinand. Yeah, difficult there as well. The keeper had already brought out a fair amount. I think that shot could have been the one for Nicholas if he could... Just get it off. 75 minutes now gone. That time working against the Argentine. Mateus here on the edge of the box. And looking for holes that just don't seem to be there in the defence for Tor. This is pretty much do or die situation right now for Nicolas. Because if he concedes the next goal, yeah. this game is over. Oh, he's offside. <laughs> Offside, just as a moment where Tor, I'm sure his heart rate probably uh, just jumped up by uh, a good 20 beats per minute there as he saw that that through ball came through and then, of course, sinks right down to your stomach as soon as you realise that it's offside. He's going to make some more changes. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Mateus come as well to try and strengthen up that midfield. He has done. Yeah. The German just to sit in front of the back four, nice little pace injection as well across your midfield, closing people down, getting first to balls, winning 50-50s. This is where all the little things like that need to be perfect. Can Tor hold on? This would be another big upset, without a doubt. What we've seen from this second leg has been fairly well dominated by Nicholas. There is surely no. Neuer will get on it. He had time. He had time. I think he had a, a good one, two touches more there as the ball swung in. Again, a man on the edge of the box. Now down to Neymar. Loses out almost instantly. He's looking for someone who can take the shot. There is Neymar and his, the, his leg was already cocked there. He'd already started swinging for it. As the defender just nicks it away. 82, 83 minutes gone. And time... He's working against Nicholas. Now Tor is coming forward. The pass was woeful, though. And you can't afford to give that possession away. Yeah, very, very poor pass from Tor. And Nicholas, you just gave him the opportunity to take this game into his own hands and try and force an extra time situation. Hullick coming forward, played into Ronaldo. Finesse on the edge of the box. And Tor with a good bit of goalkeeper movement. Couple of steps to his left. Clutches onto it. And potentially crushes Nicholas's dreams of lifting this trophy big ball though and I'm not sure that I completely agree with that one okay the pass afterwards was not great from Nicholas so he's got possession back but you no know, giving that possession away 
I know your options are limited as well. Taking a short throw can often uh, leave you a little bit even or even more uh, in a risky situation. But this is what he needs to do. Just keep a hold of that ball. Play it down to where this space is. Mateus in Let's towards to Alexandro. It's three minutes added on. So just a little more time here for Tor. One minute of extra time to go. He's keeping possession nicely. I think that's it, you know, Joe. I think that is it. I don't think that Nicholas is going to get another sniff of this one. There he does finally get it, but he's booted up. Is the final whistle going to come in? Not just yet, but there it is. Ball over the top, and Nicholas goes out to the Brazilian tour here in the round of 16. Not a result that I think was predicted. And zero emotion from Tor. It's almost like this was expected. This is what he knew he could do. This is what he knew that he was capable of. And Tor, Nicholas there next to him, just a little pat on the back from Tor. Big celebration. Patting the crescent of his club. And he will move on to the quarterfinals. Where you'd think, unless we've seen an absolute miracle,